This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. New at 11 in Indianapolis, families trying to move forward after someone broke into their home and stole their kids' clothes and toys. RTV6's Graham Hunter shows you how they were able to find some of the stolen items and what police say you should do in a similar situation. Sometimes you just have to wonder. Who steals from a child? While Jocelyn Minerve and her family slept, someone broke into their garage. I look over here. I said, oh my goodness, there's a hole in our garage. Ian Minerve noticed the break-in first. Uh, it was just mixed emotions. It was just frustration, anger. And what the criminals got? My wife's clothes, since she's pregnant, stored in here. Plus kids' clothes and toys and accessories they were planning to hand down to the child they're expecting in a few weeks. The stroller's gone, the bouncer's gone, the high chair's gone. Two bikes were also stolen. Basketballs that I use for school because I'm a teacher. He mentors all the kids on the street. They all know him. Now they're trying to figure out how to rebuild. I was like, what are we going to do? We don't have anything for the baby and nothing for the kids. Then the story took an unlikely turn. Monday morning, the Minerves were driving just a few blocks from their home and they looked out the front windshield. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Those That's are our bikes. bikes. They spotted two people riding their bikes. My name is Ian Minerve. They called police. And we see the suspect who has our both stuff. our bikes. That's exactly what a spokesman from IMPD says you should do. If someone steals your stuff and you track it down, let IMPD help you get it back. We got our bikes. So I was grateful for that. But the Minerves are hoping someone may be able to help them recoup their kids' clothes. For two-year-old Natalie, five-year-old Monty, and another on the way, all their clothes from three months and older are gone. Reporting from the east side. Who steals from a child? Like, you're stealing from a baby. Graham Hunter, RTV6. And the family says the people they spotted with their bikes claimed they bought them from someone else. No one was arrested. It's a good reminder to be aware of people selling items that have been stolen. One way to do that is to meet an e-commerce zone set up at a police station if you're purchasing something from an online marketplace. And working for you, RTV6 is getting answers for two viewers in separate neighborhoods who have the same problem. It's like the water stands for days on end, and then the kids want to come out, and we can't let them. It seems like almost every week, you know, it'll get water in there stand for a while. And that's why I haven't been able to put any grass out. People living along West Madison Street in Kokomo and Zartman Road, about five miles away, are dealing with flooding. Neither street has a stormwater drain. We went to the city for answers. We learned Madison Street is set to get stormwater drains installed within the next few weeks. We actually contracted that project out. Uh, contractors have not been able to start on that work yet, though, because of the heavy amounts of rain we've experienced. As for Zartman Road, the deputy mayor says the flooding is caused by a damaged drain in the farm field behind their homes. That's not on city property, and the situation is a dispute between property owners. And we are getting results on the west side of Indianapolis after RTV6 asked questions about the condition of Lentz Park, also known as Lynn Park, by neighbors. The Parks Department made some improvements. The park now has new benches, trash cans, and even a new net for the basketball hoop. It still needs a new hoop and a paved court. If you have a problem and need help getting answers or results, contact us at workingforyou at rtv6.com. Now here's a live look at downtown Indianapolis. It's a great night for a little soccer at Carroll Stadium, as you can see. Hopefully you enjoy the dry day. Kevin is tracking the return of rain, though, Kevin. Uh, the humidity is nice and low. That made it today so enjoyable and temperature still comfortable. Now, we are watching rain, but it is not a part of your morning hours tomorrow. I think your dry w drive will be dry. Rain sits basically in Iowa. It will start to lessen as it moves our way into the drier air, diminish a bit. 64 in Muncie, 65 in Indianapolis. These are current temperatures. Many of you woke up with temperatures in the 40s this morning. We'll be in the 50s first thing in the morning, 58, 76 by lunchtime. A decent amount of mid to high level clouds. The chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm just 20 percent. The better chance of rain will come as we get to Wednesday. There's the cloud cover in the morning. Mid morning still clouds around a mixture of clouds and sunshine in the afternoon and high temperature in Indy, 82 degrees. We'll talk about the changes for the rest of the week coming up. New at 11, development denied. A proposed apartment retail complex and parking garage is not coming to Zionsville. Motion passed to pass four to three is not approved. <coughs>
Tonight, the town council voted four to three against the project. Many people who live in the town oppose the plan, saying the development is not in the character of Zionsville. One resident we spoke to says they are still open to other types of development that fit in better with their town. What was not brought up tonight, but, but happy to mention it here, is that we actually had an alternative proposal that had townhomes, single family residences, and apartments, and some retail for that exact spot proven to be profitable, and we had people ready to invest in it. The proposal ended in a tie vote last month because one council member was absent. And tonight, the Indianapolis City County Council met just hours after Councilor Stephen Clay stepped down. The resignation comes six months before the end of his term. Clay became the center of controversy last year after he became council president with the help of Republicans. The move led to tension with fellow Democrats. The Marion County Democratic Party chair tells RTV6 a replacement will be chosen to fill the remainder of Clay's term within 30 days. And it's been just over one year since someone shot and killed a Dollar General clerk in Indianapolis. Now police are releasing a new piece of evidence. Investigators want to know if you recognize the face in this sketch here. This is the suspect accused of killing Brian Urey in May of last year at the Dollar General on Emerson Way. Dollar General is offering a $10,000 reward for info leading to an arrest and conviction in the case. You can call Crime Stoppers anonymously at 317-262-TIPS. Metro police are also asking for help identifying a man accused of stealing a woman's purse and shoving her into a pole, knocking her unconscious. These are surveillance pictures from the scene on Salem Street near 38th and Meridian. The attack happened just after 4.30 last Thursday afternoon. You can also call Crime Stoppers to report info in this case. And IMPD says the department is adding patrols in and around the downtown area. After a recent rise in violence, 10 people have been shot downtown since May 1st. Last year, four people were shot downtown the entire year. The area along the canal has become a major focus for police after three people were shot there over the weekend. Lachey Steele, whose grandmother has lived near the canal for 27 years, thinks violence among young people is getting out of control. You know, you have a lot of kids now, they're so quick to fight. Oh, he did this or he said this or so quick to pull out a gun and they're not aware of the consequences or how that could affect someone like right away in long term too. Downtown Indy is working with police to identify the cause of the increased violence, but says downtown is still very safe. Police say crime statistics show the downtown district is the safest in Marion County. One person is injured and three pet dogs are dead after a fire on the west side. Wayne Township firefighters were called to a home on Melrose Avenue at 2.30 this afternoon. Crews brought the fire under control in around 15 minutes. A female victim was taken to the hospital in serious condition. One dog did survive. Firefighters treated her with a special oxygen mask and took her to Noah's Animal Hospital for treatment. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Electronic cigarettes are legal, but they could soon be banned from one central Indiana city. Carmel is considering a proposal to define and regulate e-cigarettes. It would broaden the definition of smoking to include e-cigs and ban them from all public places, including libraries, schools, laundromats, malls, sports arenas, and more. The proposal has been referred to a committee. It is being sponsored by five of the seven counselors, so it is likely to pass. If you need a little help stocking your fridge or cupboards, help is on the way. Today, the Community Action Relief Effort Program announced its mobile pantry schedule. The program started in 2015 after a report found that hunger is at the root of many social issues, including crime. The report prompted Gleaners Food Bank to develop a program to address the hunger issue in six focus areas. Today is the first day. We'll be doing six weekly distributions, Monday through Thursday, and then two on Saturday. This is our fifth summer in collaboration with IMPD, IFD, IEMS, and other wraparound providers. To find the mobile food pantry locations and dates, go to the RTV6 app or the IndyChannel.com and click on this story.
Changes are coming to a major development in Kokomo. The city says a new developer has taken over a project that includes a six-story Hilton Garden Inn. Kokomo officials say that the developer will build a public rooftop space on top of the hotel. In addition to that, the city says they will make sure the look of the conference center will tie directly to Kokomo's industrial history. Modifications to the design mean there will be a larger space for the Kokomo Automotive Museum. And the city will build a four-level public parking garage with about 180 spaces. Construction will start this fall and should be complete by spring of 2021. A very familiar pattern returning to central Indiana. We'll talk about our increasing chance of rain this week. When I started here, I was in a halfway house and I got the job here and it was like the best day ever. Coming up, the company that prides itself on hiring Hoosiers looking for a fresh start. So Emma, it's up to you. If you came up with a correct response, you're going to be the new Jeopardy champion. What is a shocking end to a winning streak? The surprising final decision that left Jeopardy contestant James Halsauer just short of history. Today at Ashley Home Store, this is home. This is RTV6 News at 11, working for you. Welcome back. Are you willing to pay even more for guacamole at Chipotle? The restaurant chain says its prices could go up if tariffs are placed on goods from Mexico. The president's proposed tariffs are set to start one week from today. Chipotle's CEO says if that happens, the company's cost would rise $15 million this year. Mexico is a major exporter of avocados and other agricultural products used by the company. And tariffs could impact how much you pay for many products, including milk. Wisconsin farmers are already dealing with tariffs imposed on China. But some dairy farmers say while tariffs are a burden, something needs to be done to create fair trade. Ending the tariffs, I think, is not going to help us in the long run either because that's the boat we've already been floating in. Um, so if something doesn't change, we're, we're just going to be stuck where we always have been. I think in the long run, it's, it's going to be positive for us. Um, you know, working these tariffs out, that's, that's what we need. The Indiana Chamber of Commerce is criticizing potential tariffs. In a statement released today, the chamber president and CEO says, quote, using economic threats against our neighbor and one of our country's largest trading partners to compensate for unfulfilled promises by the administration and Congress on immigration is an irrational and extremely damaging concept, end quote. And Indiana businesses and consumers will once again be the innocent victims through paying what amounts to tax increases. And now to a development that business leaders say will be good for Indiana's economy. A food processing company is set to break ground tomorrow on an $11 million project in Greenwood. The 65,000 square foot facility will be built just south of the intersection of Graham and Allen Roads. California Customs Fruits and Flavors makes processed fruit for yogurt, bakery fillings and other food. The new facility will create 24 new positions by 2023. And tonight, Hiring Hoosiers shines a spotlight on a company that provides job opportunities to people looking for a second chance. Goodwill of Southern and Central Indiana says a fraction of its workers have a criminal record. The majority of those employees excel and move up in the company, like Angel by Storfer. She served time in prison after being convicted of a drug charge. Goodwill was one of the few companies willing to hire her. Now, she's an assistant manager. It makes me feel like I still can be somebody, and my background doesn't judge me. I'm not judged by my background here. We believe that it doesn't matter what you did, it's what you can do, and what an individual can do um, now and moving forward. So if you want a chance at Goodwill, you're going to get a chance. And if you want to advance at Goodwill, you can really do that if you stick with it. If you want to learn more about open positions at Goodwill or its criminal record guidelines, we've posted links in this story at HiringHoosiers.com. Now to a warning about a tree killer that could be lurking in your yard. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources says rhododendrons sold at 70 Walmarts and 18 rural kings across the state are infected with sudden oak death, a fungus that kills oak trees. The fungal disease has killed more than 1 million trees in California and Oregon. DNR says the impact would be even more dramatic here. It can kill certain uh, species of plants, including oak trees. So that would be a dangerous one, obviously, to let loose here in Indiana because we've got so much oak in our forests. 
Infected plants will show symptoms like browning leaves and overall wilt. DNR is asking anyone that bought Wotogen drawn from Rural King or Walmart stores to destroy the plants or contact DNR at 1-866-NO-EXOTIC. I think a lot of Hoosiers are saying, oh no, because ash yeah. trees pretty much just got wiped out. So mm -hmm. if you've had those and you're getting those removed, it gets scary when you start thinking about Absolutely. removing all kinds of oaks. Looks okay. like you guys removed something. Yeah, so um, I'll be honest, you know, when the weather's nice, I'm not always busy. So I did a little <laughs> dinner break fishing with my dad. He's the one that caught it. I just held it up and I pushed the camera or the fish a little closer to the camera so it looks bigger than it really is. Okay, but, uh, dinner. He yep, he went right back in the water. All is good. Well, water. Rain chances, they'll be with us for the rest of the week. But most significant, I'd say Wednesday through Sunday. That's, I know, a long stretch, but tomorrow's chance for rain is fairly minimal. The reason the prolonged chance for rain, the frontal boundary, the spark for showers and thunderstorms, will push into central Indiana and kind of waver a little north and south, and that will determine uh, where the heaviest rainfall will be through the weekend. Looks like in the short term, our best chance for rain, and I think we'll see periods of rain and thunderstorms on Wednesday. A few of those storms could be severe over the southern half of the state. Certainly heavy rainfall potential with any of the thunderstorms that develop. Right now, temperatures comfortable. 60 in Crawfordsville. Remember, we were headed into the 40s. Overnight last night, we'll stay in the 50s tonight. It's 65 currently in Indianapolis. Say hello to Nemo. He's in charge of this group. You got Skeeter the cat and then Missy the little Yorkie. If you have to walk the dogs before you head off to work in the morning, dry. Decent amount of cloud cover. Temperature about 74. Thanks to Deborah for sending in the family photo. As far as temperatures during the day tomorrow, they'll warm into the 80s. The mid to high level clouds unlikely to produce any rain early in the day. 20% chance we'll see some some afternoon showers or thunderstorms, but again, not expecting it to be widespread. Miss the 80 degree mark, most likely to the north. To the south should be just up and over. That south wind everywhere will help temperatures and draw in more humidity. There's your chance for showers and thunderstorms the rest of the work week, most likely on Wednesday. Fairly consistent throughout the day. Morning showers and thunderstorms may cut off some of the warming, but we should still make it above 80. Wednesday morning, showers, some thunderstorms. That goes through, then we wait for the next round to build. Should be in the afternoon into the the evening hours, any one of which could be strong to severe. We'll keep our eye on that. Here's your seven day planner. As we move to the weekend, still the chance for showers and thunderstorms right now. Saturday night looks to be the most likely time over the weekend, but temperatures pretty consistently lower 80s for highs, mid 60s for lows with that daily chance for rain. The championship run that captivated the country is over. ABC's Romina Puga explains how Jeopardy contestant James Holzhauer's run for the record ended today. Political philosophy 16. In a dramatic twist, Jeopardy powerhouse James Holzhauer lost to librarian Emma Betcher on Monday in his 33rd game. Emma? What are rose-colored glasses? Yes. He was just about to surpass previous champion Ken Jennings' record winnings. In the final Jeopardy round, Holzhauer only wagered $1,399. His wager. A modest one for the first time. That His competitor beating him by nearly $22,000. So Emma, it's up to you. If you came up with a correct response, you're going to be the new Jeopardy champion. Did you? You did. What did you wager? Hour's historic run began April 4th and brought up the show's ratings with his unique betting methods. You think about your, your stack as game pieces, not money. Grabbing every slot in the top 10 records for most money won in a single game. Getting 97% of the questions he answers right and only missing one final Jeopardy and four of his favorite daily doubles. James. What is tallow? He right. won Double almost $2.5 million since then and only needed $58,585 to break the all-time record held by Jennings. To put it in perspective, Jennings reached that record over 74 games, while Holzhauer was almost caught up in 34. When asked about Holzhauer's loss, Jennings said he feels a little bit of the same letdown he felt when he lost in 2004. He said he really wanted to see what would happen. Romina Puga, ABC News, Los Angeles. Well, Emma came out swinging. I actually yeah. watched tonight. Uh, yeah. that was, uh, he had no chance. Mm. It was all Emma all the time. Mm -hmm. So is Jeopardy Trust a sport? You think it's a sport? It could be.
You know, sport there's, of the brain. There is wagering involved. All right, Lots no, of sure. wagering in sports. Uh, and calling all stars tonight. Speaking of sports, the return of the Indiana Kentucky series this week. Names and faces. Uh, well, you're going to see for years to come. It's in the spotlight with the news 11. Zaxby's. Welcome back. Good evening. They've all graduated high school. Most of them will hook up with their college teams next week, but not before one final moment. The Indiana Kentucky All Star Series is this week a grand finale in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. It's as old school as it gets. Marion University's upstairs gym. No air conditioning, only a few lights, but none of that matters as much as wearing the All Star jersey. Feel bizarre to have that jersey on. Yeah, it's crazy. Man. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> they felt like we were the best players in the state, and they picked us for a reason. So we just want to go out there and uh, show how good Indiana basketball is. So a 13-man roster, hand-selected by a former All-Star coach and new All-Star director, Mike Broughton. What is it about this series that makes it special? Well, I just saw the Kentucky team beat our juniors last night, and they, a bunch of them ran out on the court, and that just pretty much sums it up. It's a, it's a friendly rivalry, and, of course, growing up in southern Indiana, where I did, you know, we had a lot of Kentucky ties, and so you just want to beat them, and they think they're bringing the best team they've had for years here, too. But Indiana's team is ready, armed with D1 talent, representing five state titles, and a head coach who won one with Warren Central a year ago. You got a roster like this, is there any pressure? None. No. All, all, <laughs> all I've heard is how good Kentucky is, best oh, team yeah. they've had in years, and Mike has told me, and we haven't been swept by them for so many years, so no pressure at all. <laughs> in fact, the only pressure is that this is the final week of their high school careers. When you look at it, for your high school career, this is it. Yes, it is. It's crazy how fast it went by. Uh, I remember coming in as a freshman, and now I'm already about to graduate, or just graduated, about to go to IU on Wednesday, so that's crazy. So you got to go out in style. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So in a gym soaked with history, this group prepares to make their own. Careers with plenty of memories, perhaps one or two more special ones still to come. I know you're old school, so it's one game at a time, but a sweep would be nice, right? Yeah, it would be very nice. Very nice. Uh, <laughs> we're excited to play on Wednesday against the juniors and then uh, definitely have a little bit of a chip up on our shoulder to go into Friday against Kentucky at Kentucky and then definitely win one at home um, at Bentley's Life. Well, Indiana getting a split in the series last year. Saturday's game, Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Tickets start at just 7 bucks. Girls game at 5, boys game at 7. Always a lot of fun. Well, down on the farm tonight, Indians with an extra inning win at Louisville. 7, 6, and 10 innings. Jason Martin, game-winning double tonight. Tribe return home a week from tomorrow night. And finally tonight, first and foremost, the French Open. Kevin Gregory, pay attention. Watch the near court. It's Benoit Pair trying to play with the smash. Ball disappears or does it? Watch his racket as the ball actually got stuck inside the base of it. Just below the... Just below the netting. Uh, that's unfortunate. Now you see it, now you don't. Uh, perhaps adding insult to injury, he later lost the five setter. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't. Did you, that really did happen? Did you catch it? Yeah, it here's really what yeah. I would have done, though. Yeah. I would have thrown my racket over the over net it. right away. Just right? <laughs> see if he'd I hit it. What Is that legal? Then. No. No. Huh. Wouldn't stop situation. me. situation. We'll be right back. I need a look. <laughs> that's why the bananas look so good at Meyer. The Indianapolis Public Library recruited First Lady Stephanie Hogsett today to kick off the library's annual summer reading program. Kids can earn prizes and take part in special activities through the program. Kids can sign up at any branch library and there's a reading program for adults even. It's been going on 100 years. That's a whole lot of reading. All right, showers just off to the west feels like it's been going on for a month that we've had rain. The chance for rain yep. tomorrow, just 20%. The much better chance arrives on Wednesday. All right. Well, thank you for making RTV6 your choice for news. GMI starts at 4.30. Good night.